The United States of America recently reported results for the third quarter. Economic results, that is. What do they mean? Let's turn to Jeff Snyder in this latest episode of Macro Peace Theater. I am your narrator, Emil Kalinowski, and we'll be looking to Jeff to help us understand what the different components of GDP did in the third quarter and what that might mean going forward. You can find this particular piece at the Alhambra Investments blog, posted on the 29th of October, called GDP Red Flag. You can follow Jeff's work at Twitter, on Twitter, at Jeff Snyder underscore AIP. There were no surprises in today's U.S. GDP data. As expected, output sharply decelerated, modestly missing much reduced expectations. The continuously compounded annual rate of change for Q3 2021 compared to Q2 was the tiniest bit less than 2%, 1.99591%, given most recent expectations had been closer to 3%. It was only two months ago, mid-August, when the blue-chip consensus pegged quarterly growth at better than 7%. Such a fast drop-off immediately brings up Delta COVID, or consumer inflation. However, since this is very much in line with, well, pretty much everything else that's come across and going back further, back around April and May, the GDP estimates and underlying supporting data only add more to the growth scare already being priced in bond markets, along with more high-frequency data already having been leaning this same way. To that end, the growing realization of potentially disturbing disappointment over stimulus. It was taken for granted how huge fiscal doses should have produced some lasting impact. Instead, it would be lucky to have kept up just to the end of this year, rather than the red-hot economy believed to be unstoppable not so long ago. In real terms, Q3 real GDP remains more than half a trillion below its pre-COVID baseline annual rates. Therefore, a significant deficit to that minimum level of recovery, never mind the utterly utterly mind-boggling 6 trillion plus that's missing on top, in just this one quarter from the last time the economy broke. What should be most concerning, especially in this same context of stimulus, is that this huge gap remains despite historic levels of government intervention. I'm neither including nor counting the QE fairy tale here. In the GDP figures, meaning GDI, both the growth rate and the output gap suffered even with annual rate, another half trillion in stipends flushed into the third quarter. Stipends. That alone should be, but won't be, outside any honest interpretation of yields, a huge red flag. These quarterly figures reflect changes and conditions already cited in the monthly data in everything from PCE, personal consumption expenditures, to inventory levels and the huge global disparity between U.S.-led goods buying and the otherwise awful recovery trends everywhere else, basically imports versus exports. When it comes to inventory, according to the BEA, Bureau of Economic Analysis, Aggregate investment in product declined by another $68 billion in Q3 when compared to a revised $174 billion drop during Q2. The way GDP is pieced together, the substantially smaller dip therefore added 2.07 points to the overall growth rate, meaning without a huge increase in inventory in most parts of the goods economy, GDP was actually slightly negative. Real final sales was coming in at negative 0.1% quarter over quarter. In other words, overall inventories declined because of what's going on in the auto sector, which is obscuring the underlying macro cycle tendencies. 
We know auto inventories decreased somewhat more during the third quarter, but that other goods inventories continues to rise significantly, no matter how some empty shelves otherwise might make it seem. That last part was the inventory contribution in GDP. The rest of the major components, trade, PCE, investment, nothing unexpected. The overall economy slowed down a lot in each, leaving those huge overall gaps cited above. If nothing more than Delta Corona or just fears of it, then Q3's downtick, as bad as it was, given the lack of progress in closing those gaps, wouldn't be anything more than transitory. The Delta wave having largely disappeared, at least where it had been most prevalent during those three months, the system should easily get back on track. Even if it is the disease case, though I certainly don't believe it has been, just what track is the economy going back on? Most widely believe it is a recovery trajectory when factoring stipends. It couldn't manage to do so even with them. And if the latter hopped up further on non-auto inventory, the slowdown might stick around regardless of the pandemic's pattern of ups and downs. This only leaves us with inflation. As with all the other GDP estimates, the price deflators in the consumer segment turned somewhat lower in Q3 when compared to Q2. That is, the rate of increase, prices still went up, another second derivative, was slightly diminished, further pointing to their transitory non-money factors. And if the economy really is slowing down to its non-recovery baseline, especially as stipends fade further, Q3's deflator indices would then mark Q2 as the Q consumer price level peak with downside already apparent in the monthly inflation estimates, particularly if good spending continues to soften while inventory everywhere other than automobiles keeps getting delivered to whichever parts of the supply chain hadn't anticipated stimulus, only manifesting a couple of quarters of the same demand. Not much to consider here, merely putting some useful numbers and context on where things stand as of the end of September. What those things mean moving forward, this depends on your view of stipends, COVID, and legitimate economic potential. Thank you for listening to that episode of Macro Peace Theater. I'm glad it was a short piece because I didn't have the enthusiasm. I didn't have the oomph to put behind all these words. I don't know why. Maybe I need to drink more coffee. I'm not sure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if that reading wasn't to your satisfaction and I don't see how it could have been, why don't you go to the Alhambra Investments blog, go to October 29th, look up GDP Red Flag, and read the article for yourself, as well as check out the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different graphs. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. I will be back tomorrow with another piece of macroeconomic masterpiece theater.